Wow, OK, there's nothing to add to that. I mean, the symptoms, as you call it, let's just take a look at your dad then. I mean, were there symptoms? Is this the point you're making about this whole thing? I mean, like, you have said your dad might be alive if he hadn't ignored the symptoms. There were symptoms. Well, the symptoms I know he had, and we only know he had, was a pain in the stomach. He didn't have the pain in his arm. He didn't. When was that? Before the day that, when you were in the That airport? was, he told us about it on the Monday. He died on the Tuesday morning. Now, he could have had the pain in the stomach on the Sunday, and he didn't tell us. Do you know what I mean? He... he if I look back, and this is all hindsight, he probably looked a little bit pale on on, the, on that weekend, you know, that Halloween weekend. Um, uh, and not to annoy anybody, he called it a pain in the stomach, which could have been something else entirely different. Because then people say it was a pain in the stomach, or you get over. He said it was like a hunger pain. He said it was right. like uh, it was like the bottom of someone. Was, was like he telling the pain. truth? Do you think, or do you think he might have known it was something worse? I mean, just possible. Um, no, he probably. Be po- <laughs> it's hard to know with dad because you know mm. he was invincible as we all knew yeah. or all thought. Um, he probably would have had one or two other. I'm sure he must have had one or two other symptoms. That but he what I mean is, did he fob it off like a typical Irish man? Um, yes, and then probably near the later stages. Um, yeah, well, I said later stages. Later that evening, um, he probably was, you know, because we spoke to some of his friends that were in that night, and they said, yeah, no, he did say, you know, it wasn't like your dad to complain, but he definitely did say, you know, uh, he just pain in his stomach. And he, he actually said to one of my next door neighbour, and he actually said to my mum, who was urging to go to the doctor that night, um, Look, if it's still there tomorrow, I'll go. And tomorrow was the morning he passed away, so that was that just a bit too late, obviously. So the sheer madness of it all is the bit that obviously hits you as much as anything else. It's very difficult to comprehend when someone so active and fit is taken from you, basically, in the blink of an eye. You know, your dad wasn't sick, he wasn't frail, he wasn't old. Uh, he rode a motorbike to work, all the rest of it. Um, you are a dad yourself. You've got the twins, Rocco and Jay. Did you feel you had to find strength for the sake of the little ones? Was it, was it all to do with you, or were they too small to really get it all? Well, at the time, they were only two, so they were, yeah. they were too young. Yeah. Um, and my sister's little fellow was younger again, six or seven months younger again, so... Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's it, it it's one of those where you always say, "Oh, you know, it, not that it'll never happen to you, but you do never expect when it happens." There's there's no there's no easy way, but it is what it is, you know. And I think um, the only thing I will say for you know for dad, you see people. There's no easy way, but you see people who have obviously have terminal illnesses that 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 wither away to nothing. Um, and I always said it. I said it on the you know on the day with the, on his coffin. He looked fantastic in the coffin <laughs> so that sounds yeah, mad but yeah. he did he looked very well he didn't look sick he didn't look anything those are the memories that we have amongst others um, and dad did always say you know as a kid or growing up you know oh well it's a short life and and um, you know when I go I want to go like that and right. and we take a little bit of solace in that that you know he did go the way he wanted to go harder on the people left behind no doubt but you know that's like Okay I know that I'm probably not allowed to ask a woman on the programme this but I, I can ask a pop star go right ahead and, and tell <laughs> us um, what, what age are you? What age am I? Yeah. I'm 32 Okay you're 32 so I have to ask this question here which is from a text uh, ask Nikki if he Got the NCT himself, or are you too young? I, at the moment, I haven't, no. Um, ah, Nicky. But uh, no, I'm not too young. I, I'm not saying I'm sitting here but going, oh, to... I've loads of time to wait. I will get the NCT, yeah, you know, no right. doubt. Um, I think I should, to be quite honest, because some of the, these things are uh, hereditary and there's more, um, from what I'm learning, there's more uh, tests in America to say that uh, things like cholesterol are probably, or are hereditary, and it's how you play it out. It's, right, yeah. If you live your life you know, terribly bad with, you know, no exercise and, and an unhealthy lifestyle, then your hereditary um, or your high blood pressure or your, your cholesterol will only get worse. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, good question and I, I should and I will. Absolutely, that came in from Mike. There's a few others just ranged from what a lovely guy, fame didn't clearly go to his head, best of luck with the campaign. In other words, Nicky's doing a great thing in his father's name. It's a wonderful campaign, good for him, his father will be proud of him. Thank you. It's nice to hear that bit, isn't it? Absolutely. Really well I, again, you know, it was never done. I mean, a lot of, a lot of celebrities are, are, I suppose, in a way... Um, endorse charities and I've done it myself with lots and it's always a pleasure to do it this one just feels that little bit more special to me it's, I, I suppose the difference is, is when you record a song and you'll know all about this Dave if you write a song you want people to know I've written it and it's come from here and with this campaign this came from the entire Bourne family and um, my sister my brother and my mum to, to, to try and you know I don't believe the, the, the Irish Heart Foundation this year had planned on the awareness campaign they did an amazing campaign with the stroke campaign you'll remember the ad on TV um, and they were probably going to do something as equally as good in a different area because yeah. there's so many different areas and they all need as much work and we you know directed this we said well 
we want to do this night. We want to celebrate it. We want to raise the funds and we want to try and, you know, for this year, see if we can create this side of it. So it feels like it's it's organic almost, you know what I mean? Right. In fact, the funny thing is, like, my dad was older than yours, but um, he died the same way. I, like, I mean, a nervous day in his life. He was on the 46A bus. He died in the bus. The place where, you know, Shay Healy wrote a Eurovision winner. <laughs> Bagatelle of a song, I think, about it as well. Anyway, he died in the bus, got a heart attack, just like that, gone in a minute as well. And he died on November 25th. So the first Christmas for us was pretty hell, I can tell you. So the first Christmas for you must have been pretty tough. Family occasions following the death of an integral member of the family. Yeah, yeah no, it is tough. I mean, he died again November 3rd. So his birthday was December 14th. So it was four, right. five or six weeks before his birthday. And then Christmas. And then my mum's birthday is January as well. So that was... That was in the space of three months with mom's birthday, dad's birthday, Christmas, um, and and stuff like that. But again, like you know, you just you just move on. You know, you just you just have to keep. I know, but I mean, you couldn't parts. have. I mean, in two thousand and nine, what a whammer of a year in some ways. I mean, like you know, your bandmate Keen Egan also lost his dad that summer. Your friend and fellow boy band member Stephen Gately was found dead as well. It was pretty, a strange few months. Pretty yeah, strange. Yeah, well, like, it was hard hitting on everybody, and it. Um, Georgina, my wife's uh, cousin, passed away as well, and he was he was only in his thirties. And he died, I think, uh, bef- about four or five weeks after my dad. Um, and I remember as well, this sounds silly, but I remember um, Thierry Henry handled the ball um, that yeah, right. same, about two weeks after my dad died. you got to remember, I'm a football nut, so I was looking forward to this game. I went to the game in Coe Park that they lost 1-0. I was watching, we were doing Choi Line in Dublin, and I was watching the, the, the Paris game in my dressing room. And when that happened, I, I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm losing it. At Can't this get any worse. I couldn't get out of bed the next morning. I was supposed right. to travel to England. I rang the lads up and said, you know what, lads, this is, I just need to... I need yeah, to if I remember head. rightly the game you saw in Dublin, Thierry Henry got that guy. Old, didn't he? Uh, it was yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He did. Uh, yeah, 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 when Keane got the one then over in Paris. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll never forgive him. It was a time in life that you know there was too much happening, Dave. And if I ever and meet you know, Jerry on Keane has out. a chance to get him back now because he's playing the same American League. As that's Robbie, right, as Robbie. As yes, that's true. Yeah, we're, we're all so hoping we, Robbie we, will do him. We'll all be supporting the LA Galaxy <laughs> or the LA Galaxy team or whatever they call it in plural. Um, can you tell Nicky we're all so proud of him and we love him? That's from Roisin. Big thanks to Nicky. Helped so much through the past year. That's from Laura and a bunch of other ones as well. Doing a great job. Job, fair play to him doing very brave by your father that's from Nora and there's lots more as well um, I saw Nicky in Port Marnock recently didn't recognise him and said to my girlfriend look at your man he wants to be in Westlife she told me that <laughs> it is Nicky from Westlife I love Nicky jo- that's Joanne T in Limerick and um, there's loads more of those ones now um, uh, this might sound glib but it's not meant to because it does things to who you are as well in terms of your professional life did your songwriting take a different direction at all did you get more or less kind of happy clappy or whatever the word is since my dad passed yeah um we, we 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 recorded. Um, we were in the middle of recording. Sorry, we had recorded an album when when um, Keane's dad passed. Uh, so we were in the middle of recording at that point, and we recorded a song called "I'll See You Again," which we didn't write, um, but it was very apt because a woman had written about losing her daughter, um, and it's a very positive song. So when when um, my dad had heard that song because he was still alive at the time, so this was recorded in August, and my dad died in November, and Keane's dad had died that summer as well. Um, that, that that kind of puts you in a different mindset so we'd had a song like that on the album and then my dad passed and then the following album came around which was obviously last year and when we got into the recording um, I sat with a, a guy called John Shanks who was a producer a great fantastic American producer who co-writes a lot with Gary Barlow and stuff and I was telling John the story because it was very fresh in my mind and John's dad was at the time in his 80s um, very ill in hospital back in America and we had almost like a moment. John, I was telling him my story. He told me his. And John, like Americans do, said, man, we got, we got to write about this. You know, that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And there was nobody else in the room. The, the rest of the lads ha- weren't in the room at the time. And I walked outside and I said um, to the lads, look, John really wants to, to do a song like this. I was also uh, conscious that we'd done I'll See You Again the year before and it would have been the exact really same sentiment, I, I guess, um, to do a song about our dads. So I was also nervous as, as maybe how Keem would, would feel on it because people deal with yeah. grief differently yeah. um, but thankfully we all came around to the idea and we all sat in the room and it's very difficult to write a song with four band members and, and, a, and a writer but we did and the song is called uh, Too Hard to Say Goodbye and what's great about the song is um, we all wrote our own individual verses um, and that was really John sat with us and, and came up with all the chords and um, it, the chorus together we came up with together but we all went away and wrote our own individual pieces so it's very personal and he said right, to us yeah. it doesn't really matter really how good or bad it sounds it's coming from your heart if something's outrageously crap I'll tell you you know what I mean and and, and he did and, and it's a lovely little piece I mean it's not a, it's not going to be a single that was on the last album but it's a lovely 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 song and your dad I presume saw it all down through the years he must have been particularly what proud chuffed did he kind of 
He, he was, yeah. You know, I, I, listen, all the parents were, were, are brilliant in Westlife. Yeah, the, the, you know? All the parents, by the yeah. way, have fantastic relationships between they do, Westlife and parents. And it's, a, it's like an annual experience where uh, they all get together and they all meet in the dressing room, whether it's the O2 or we've been lucky enough to do Coke or yeah. twice. And it's a real family, you know, get together. And um, they were great, you know, I have to say, through the whole thing. Uh, it's weird to, you know, we're, this is our 14th year together. And obviously, you know, two parents have, have out of the eight have passed. Uh, or if you include Brian's as well, you know, his mum and dad are still, you know, healthy and happy, I think. Um, so they're still around. Um, so, yeah, out of the ten parents, if you, if you like, from the beginning, you know, my dad and Keen's dad has passed on. So, But that is that is the circle of life, isn't it? So, um, you know, you just got to... Indeed it is. Well, Nicky, look, finally then, just what are we talking about? The Irish Heart Foundation, first of all, the website is irishheart.ie, facebook.com, Irish Heart Foundation, and you can, we'll put all the numbers up on the website as well, on 2FM and Tubbity website, the low call, 1890 432 787. So finally, it's just that you're fronting the campaign, radio and TV, etc., to just, you know, Get your shit together, basically, and stop being an idiot. Stop being well, a typical Irishman. Exactly. I mean, it, you know, people say it'd be all right next week and we dream up mad stuff to make things better. But um, I think, you know, it, it's time. Like, the tagline is don't die of embarrassment. Um, listen to your heart, not your head, and call 999. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the, the kind of bones of it, to be honest. Okay, so just one last thing. What's happened with you work-wise and onwards and upwards and what's going next? Um, we have a Greatest Hits album out in uh, November, so we've uh, we've a little bit more recording to kind of, you know, kind of tweak things. Um, and that's, that'll be good because it's a, more or less, you know, the Greatest Hits. It's, it's a collection of 14 years of, our, of, of work. Um, and after that, you know, I, you know, we're looking forward to promoting that and, you know, having a, a big tour off the back of that. And then, you know, we'll see where we go from there. It's um, It's been, you know, it's been brilliant. And this album we're really looking forward to because it'll have all the kind of old stuff and, and some cool new tracks as well so all right, right. Listen, good luck with that Nicky and good luck with the campaign as well and just one last one of all the text here I saw the coverage in the paper today I think your family is great to be doing this for your dad best of luck with it and your family is important to all this too I'm a 21 year old lad uh, so not into the music but I've got to have serious respect for Westlife legends <laughs> alright <laughs> listen good morning Nicky. Nicky. I'm going to play the song in question I just say not a single but it's all there and this is the whole band in there with bits and pieces it doesn't matter who wrote which bit or whatever yep. but it's straight from the heart as I'm just thinking an American producer has to tell you to do that you know, I just told it yourself. Well, yeah, it's not that he told us to do it. It's when you're working and you're in the studio. With, I, now, hang on, D- Dave loves the cred stuff, so I don't. Okay, <laughs> doesn't matter. Sure, 